a college-educated young female abolitionist, a northern town that actually seceded during the Civil War, and a runaway slave trying to make his way along the Underground Railroad to Canada. Truth and historical fiction intermingle in Darren Wong's debut novel, The Hidden Light of Northern Fires. Darren, the executive director of the Decatur Book Festival, is here with us today. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Congratulations you. on such a wonderful book. Thank you so much. And I understand this is really steeped in your own history and the house you grew up in. Yeah, I grew up in a, in a town, in a house in a town line, New York. It was a converted barn, and uh, the barn had been part of the Underground Railroad in uh, um, the uh, 1855, 56 era. And I understand that there was a diary found in the house that kind of was the impetus for this story and the main character. Yeah, so, so I had, uh, um, as a young child, my parents, um, moved us into this house when I was five years old and uh, it was the the previous owner had been something of a hoarder a junk collector and and uh, we had to clear out all the stuff and they traded in uh, um, some of the books that were there with uh, uh, for, for a set of encyclopedias for, for me, me and my brothers and and I remember seeing this diary um, and the uh, and and the book book buyer said said look this is very old it's a, this is a woman's hand but I was too young I couldn't read it I don't know what what that but I've always imagined that was her 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 diary so tell us how you came to the story that became your first novel yeah so so um, I grew up in this town town line New York 15 miles from the Canadian border that had seceded from the Union and I had we'd been told that um, that it, the house had been an underground railroad station. But um, it didn't, you know, we'd never seen any documentation. And a few years later, or many years later, I was, uh, uh, I Googled my uh, old home address and I found an oral history online from the family, uh, the Willis family, talking about Nathan Willis, who founded the town, and Mary Willis, who'd uh, gone to Alfred University, which is a really radical thing um, in that era, and uh, had, had been running the station. And it just made me want to research about this place that I'd grown up and didn't know anything about. I know, when I was reading the book and doing some of the history on, on uh, the town, I'm like, I grew up in upstate New York. I had no idea about this story. Yeah, it's all, you know, it's funny how in the South, people pay so much attention to, to history and up, up in the northern states, it gets, uh, it gets overlooked. But uh, yeah, yeah town line didn't come back to the Union until 1946. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a, it was a crazy little uh, um, a publicity stunt. Essentially, 1946, all these actors came out. And it was a lot of fun. Now you do a lot of work with uh, the the books um, and and the the um, and writing. Where did this idea for you? This like I finally have to write yeah. my book, and this has <laughs> taken several years of your life, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, I've so I've been uh, uh, running a book festival for many years, and uh, um, I, before that I was in public radio and used to interview authors. And one of the uh, uh, conversations I would have would be around. Uh, 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 you know, authors say, where, where are you from? And I'd say, well, I, I grew up in the only town that north of the Mason-Dixon is the seed. And uh, I, then I would try and convince them that they had to write the story. I'd say, yeah, I have all this history, this, this research, you should see it. And they, uh, um, uh, they, they would say, no, this is your story. And uh, finally, finally, they can, you know, I, I, I gave up and sat down and started writing. And a very strong, young, educated female protagonist in the yeah. story, which is, is a little unusual. Yeah, it's, I mean, she, she was an amazing woman. She, you know, and it's an amazing time. Western New York during that era had, um, uh, you know, the, the women's movement started in Seneca Falls nearby. The abolitionist movement uh, was based with uh, largely Frederick Douglass, who was up in Rochester. That whole area uh, was kind of imbued with this radicalism. And, and here's this woman who uh, went away to college and, and, and came home and started doing this. What a, I mean, she's a fascinating person. Well, it's a fascinating read. And thank you so much for coming in and sharing a little bit of it. People can find out more. Dan Wang has a, a book signing tonight at 630 at the Fountain Bookstore on East Cary Street in Shaco Slip. We wish you the best of luck with everything. Thank it's a beautiful you. book. Darren thank Wong you. for joining us today.